But I want to tell you that I grew up in a village in the Eastern Cape uh, where I was uh, raised by my grandmother. And when my mother, when I was eight, my mother left to teach in Limpopo province, leaving me with my unschooled grandmother and unschooled grandfather. And in the village, everybody, men, had left for migrant labor in Johannesburg. And the only way they could communicate with their families was by writing to their families. So my mother wrote letters to my, grand, to my grandmother. And I had to respond to those letters on behalf of my grandmother and grandfather. They dictated the letters, and I wrote those letters every single month, and I read them out every single month on behalf of my grandparents. Mm -hmm. And we stood at a Professor Nongma's home, where there was a shop, and everybody in the village was waiting for the letters to be read out uh, as to who has received letters. And we chased taxis and buses coming to Cape Town to give them letters, and we also expecting them to bring the letters back. Now, in ceremonies, the, 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 the grandfathers, uh, my, my grandmother wrote, taught me how to write invitations and messages to invite people to come to ceremonies, and taught me how to write lists of groceries that we were to buy, or list of people who had contributed to um, a ceremony so that that, that, that can be recipro reciprocated. Now, we brought, I bring this knowledge to the children that I work with, where we teach them to write letters and to use writing for meaningful purposes, and they read and write letters. And, and, and talk to the people who write to them and they write back to them. And so we see Malin here standing, reading a letter that has been written by her friend to the children. And then on the other side, we see how the children are writing a letter through shared writing, which has been demonstrated to them about how to respond back to the person who has written to them uh, the letter. So bringing those uh, experiences, embodied experiences with writing and reading to the children has been very meaningful for me in encouraging the children to read and write. So the children in my club, who are grade two, three, and four, and five children, wrote together a book which they published this year called Halalawina, because working with them bilingually and showing them the purposes of reading and writing can help children to become writers. They, they have published before even their teachers could publish books. And we launched the book in April this year to show that if you teach children for meaning and for them to understand the meanings for uh, the purposes for reading and writing, they do take charge of literacy. Um, so I think I have been fast. So, <laughs> so <laughs> they do take charge of literacy. So my saying is that there is no one way to be literate. And that those social cultural practices that we are socialized into by my grandmother into writing has have actually paid off in the way in the work that I do when I work with children. And of course, these books have been um, are books that have had impact in my life and reading them. Ngugi wa Thiong were talking about how, uh, which languages we are writing in and the social cultural practices that we need to bring into literacy. Um, Borderlands, I think I read the two together because uh, uh, Gloria Anzaldua talks about uh, being bilingual, the multiple ways, the hybrid ways, uh, you know, establishing third spaces for learning, which actually launches me into multilingual education as the best way to work with children rather than an either English or mother tongue um, situation. And of course, the ways with words, with, um, we, we all know how Heath spoke about uh, socialization of children. And I think my unschooled grandmother taught me different genres um, of, of letter writing, of message writing, of even, um, even uh, writing letters. <laughs> 